Chris, you met Harold, the Hadana Ibis, and welcome to the Caravan Stage. Uh, now, for over 20 years, we have had so many different things happen here. We've had people get over their fear of birds and gain an appreciation for wildlife. You know, recently, we had a pretty incredible adventure with the gang from Up. But what you will always find here, amazing birds, and the incredible facts and figures that we have to share with you about them. But then 2020 happened. <laughs> and for the last few months, we've been the only ones here hanging around with the birds. So we are so excited to have you guys back here to share all the birds with you. Now, I'm part of a whole team of researchers. I've been with these birds for about 15 years, so lots of fun stuff to teach you about. But I have one of my friends coming out to help with that. I want to introduce everybody to Aerie. Hi, guys! Hello! Oh, my goodness. Hi, so excited to be here. You know, this place has really become home to the many birds that live here, but it feels like that for all of us as well. And we are so happy to be home. And my favorite part of every day is when Chris and I get to come out here and share all the birds and their stories with all of you, like these two spoonbills. This is Capaldi and Whitaker. Yeah, so uh, those birds are called roseate spoonbills. Uh, they're birds you can find in this exotic place called Florida. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, here they come. Uh, <laughs> now, what makes the spoonbills really unique is that very, very unusual beak. It's built for sifting through things like water and mud so that they can find things to eat. And because of the carotenoids that are in some of the food that they eat, that's what gives their feathers that pink pigmentation. Cool. Yeah, lots of cool facts, but they're pink birds with spoons on their faces, yeah. which is pretty adorable. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> Well, the adaptations uh, that make the animals really unique and really impressive, that's kind of what I like to focus on out here. And speaking of adaptations, this is a really interesting bird. Now, this bird's name is Miles, and Miles is called a trumpeter hornbill. Now, trumpeter hornbills are found in the forests of Africa, sort of a small-sized hornbill species compared to some others, demonstrating what they do best. They are agile flyers, and with those sort of medium to short-sized wings and a relatively long tail, they are built for darting in and around trees, good okay. flyers. Chris, you know what we could do? What? Okay, now that we have people back here, what if we got them involved and we could show off what it looks like when Miles is flying through the forest of Africa? Okay. Yeah, does somebody want to help out who's maybe in this section? How about you two in the back? Yeah, if you guys want to stay right there and face each other, this is what I want them to do. Chris, can you help me make a hoop? Oh, like this? Yeah, like this. Can you guys so make a hoop just like us? Yeah, uh, that's okay. perfect too. Okay, so you get it, Chris? Yeah, and they can tilt their heads. That means they are keeping their eye on something that's going on up above or down in the theater. What do you think? You make your flight right down to me. I know, we have people out here. That's something you haven't seen in a while. It's pretty exciting, but they are very, very fun. Yes, they are. You can do it. What do you think? Here, I'll, I'll make this really easy for you. <laughs> what do you think? The okay, beers, Chris, do you want me to try? Maybe it's a B or you think. Yeah, you Let's see if Caroline wants to come here. Hi, Caroline. Do you want to come see me? I know. It's been a long time since we've seen so many people in the theater. What is up there? The sun is just blinding. I can't even look. If it's a vulture, just look alive. You'll be all right. <laughs> Miles, look. I have a big juicy grape. Yeah, come on. Good job! Okay, are you ready? You guys, are your arms tired? No, trees and trees branches don't get tired. All right, you see Katie back there? Miles! <laughs> she just wants you guys to get your workout in today. Should we try one more time and yeah, see? You know again. what, the birds, they can do whatever they want. That is what is so awesome about having a animal show, is they can did she just fly around the park? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miles! We're doing a show out here! Do you guys want to put your arms down so she comes back? Shake them out, relax. We'll see if she comes back. We'll try it one more time. See what I can find. Come back out here. Chris, maybe you can go check out what sure. she's doing. But you know what? We work with all the birds and we give them a voice, meaning they can tell us that they don't want to be out here. They want to stay in the back. They'd rather go back there. Maybe they've got more treats in the back last time they were out here than out here. So we have to balance all of those treats to make sure that out here is the most positive and exciting place for them to be. So I think, Chris, are you back there still? Can you talk to me? Are you, oh, let's see. I think, there she is. All right, she's back out. Should we try it one more time? And then if Miles says no, that's okay. We can send her back and we have lots more birds to share with you guys. 
So we're going to see if she wants any of the treats I have to offer her. We'll talk more about how those treats factor into what we do here in just a second. I'm trying to put here a quick little hot lot to the hand. <laughs> Miles is not into this today. I get it. Sometimes you just want to stay in bed. Miles, what if you try flying all the way over here? And then if you want to go home, that's totally okay. That was pretty quick. Should we try it really quick, Katie? Let's try it one more time. Our hoop is there. We can get one hoop, Miles. That would be awesome. Do you see it? It's set up perfectly. Here she goes. Yeah! Nice. All right, round of applause for our volunteers. That was pretty cool. You know what? Let's do it again on the way back. Make the oh. hoop one more time, guys. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, it's a little easier coming that way, so we can give her that opportunity to practice things. Practice makes perfect with humans. Practice makes perfect with animals as well. So if she can experience success in the tree flying behavior and get good consequences from it, that's going to help her in the future. It's part of what we do. Okay, okay, okay what do you think? can you do it? She's Just thinking. Open your wings. It's instinct from there. Yeah. <laughs> She's sizing it up. She's, you just did this, Miles. Coming back the other way. <laughs> Jump. You can do it. Gary, you try. Okay. You have more treats. All for you. Thank there you. you. Go. Okay. Are you ready? Miles, do you want to try one more time? All the way back. Ready, set, fly. <laughs> Good job. Very nice, very nice. Chris, do you think we should send her back? I kind of have one more thing I wanted to try, but I don't know if we're going to get get it out of her today. What do you think? We can give it a shot. You want to try it? Shot. Okay. Chris doesn't know that I was going to do this, but um, I'm going to come down there with you guys. So I'm going to put my mask on because social distancing rules apply. And I wanted to show off what it would look like when Miles catches an insect right out of the air. So they have to dart in and around trees because one of their favorite foods to catch is flying insect. So I want to demonstrate that. That would be pretty cool, right, Chris? Yeah, but we don't have flying insects. <laughs> insects, where we're going, we don't need any insects because I have this. Does anybody know what this is? A stomp rocket. <laughs> it's a grape launcher. I saw you, you have grape launcher at home. You saw it in your eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna need the help of somebody else who wants to help me launch this grape into the atmosphere right here in the front. Come on down. And what you're gonna do, stand right on that side. We're gonna count you down. And on the countdown, when we say go, I want you to stop really hard on that yellow square, the launch pad. Are you ready? Okay, Miles is ready. All right, let's count her down, everybody. Three, Three two, two, one. That was neat. I like that you did that. Thanks, thanks. You know, that's why there's no more flying grapes in Africa. <laughs> thanks for laughing at that. Okay, so Miles, I'm so glad you hung out and stuck it out with us. You did such a great job. We'll see you later. It's so cute. So Bye, cute. Miles. It's a fun bird, but you know, not even the only hornbill. As a matter of fact, our next bird is oh, a different hornbill. Chris, I think you're okay, like let's just do the hoop again because we got a lot of practicing. Do you guys want to try the hoop with this bird? You guys are so This is not a trumpet okay. hornbill that we have. So okay. There's a lot of kinds of hornbills, and seeing them up close is what makes this so cool because the birds are flying right by people, and we want to be able to send them. But, but it's not, okay, see, yeah. Yes, it's a southern ground hornbill to be specific. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Normally they spend their time on the ground. You wouldn't get to see that flight like that, but it does give you a chance to see the gorgeous white wingtips that this species has. Make your way to stage one more time. Nicely done. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Now, yeah, these birds will spend most of their time foraging around on the ground, and they eat all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, they do. And one of the foods that they would eat out in Africa is snakes. Isn't that crazy? And venomous snakes too. So they will catch a snake, pick it up, shake it up, and then slurp it down like spaghetti. How's that for a visual? Okay, Sebastian, you did a really good job, and we're gonna see you later. Have some spaghetti in the back. <laughs> All the way, we'll see you later, Sebastian, our southern ground hornbill. That was pretty cool, right? I like that bird a lot. That yeah. bird is amazing. And we did mention the adaptations that make them different. When we think about adaptations, we think about this next bird. Who wants to meet an owl? Yeah. 
Yeah. They have incredible adaptations, right? Great eyesight, some of the best hearing of any animal in the world, silent flight, unparalleled hunters, especially in my pair incredible animals. In order for us to... <laughs> okay, um, we like to show off natural behaviors here, but um, that whole predator-prey relationship thing, I think we should leave to Nat Geo. I'm going to just make sure the chickens are totally gone. Keep okay. going with your owl yeah. Protect the chickens. Uh, we'll meet the owl. This bird is unbelievable. There he is. His name is JJ. He's a great horned owl, very common species of owl in North America. Now, you can see how he disappears into the background, camouflage coloration, another important adaptation. If you are right through the middle of the theater, you're going to get a really close look as he makes his way across the stage. He'll be right at about shoulder level. So if you have cameras, video cameras, nice. That was pretty amazing. Very, very quiet when he went across, and that's important because when they're hunting, they don't want to make sure the things that are being hunted can hear them coming, right? So they will swoop silently up into a great perch like that tree and just pounce right down on those prey items. They are incredible predators. There's another example of that amazing camouflage, a cryptic coloration that they have just allows them to disappear into the background. If they weren't moving, chances are you wouldn't even know that they were there. JJ, you are one of my favorite birds out here. He is just the neatest little thing. Great horn now is named for those little tufts of feathers up on top of the head. Not ears, just feather spikes. He is something else. Did that guy go? Okay, did you, oh, did I miss the whole owl? Yeah. Well, that was the tail end. I'll laugh, it just <laughs> Okay, but did you get to tell them all the amazing things about owls? Lots of adaptations, but I forgot an important one. See, even small owls like that, important because they can eat like a thousand mice in one year. Yeah, and rodents are so cool because they're super smart and really trainable. Yeah, yeah. I used to have pet rats. Remember that, Chris? Pet rats. But see, what happens is when bird of prey like JJ move in, rats and mice move out. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say that that rat problem we had it's behind us now. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of smart animals out there. Yeah, and you know what, one of my favorites is the ravens because they're problem solvers like Dixon. Hi Dixon. Uh, there he yeah, is. and Chris, this would be a great bird to be able to talk about how behavior works. Okay, we mentioned this with the trumpet or hornbill, but this is a great opportunity. You've seen us working with treats. Basically, here's how we do this. Every time the animals do something we like, we want to make sure they get something they like. It increases the likeliness that they're going to do those. Th <laughs> hey, what was that? That's not my shoelaces. What? What are you doing? Stop! No, 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 no! Come on! Wait. Dixon. <laughs> uh, so, like I was saying, if they Dixon, Dixon, Harry, why did you give him a treat for that? I liked it. Because <laughs> you liked it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing. It's about consequences. See, an animal chooses to do something, and depending on what happens afterwards, that determines... Stop it! Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry, Chris. Uh, it's an important point, though, because see, what happens is, if you're not careful, uh, if the consequences of something you don't like is something the animal likes, the chances are they're going to do that thing again. Harry, remember that's that. That's very true. It's okay. very true. <laughs> Dixon, what are you doing? <laughs> what happened? Did you guys hear me? Oh, wow. What? He pulled your mic cord? No way! Okay, I'm okay your mic is not working. not working. Madison, in the booth can back you there? Can you can hear me? Okay, hey, I cannot hear you. I'm gonna go get a backup. You wanna take over? I... I'll figure out what happened. I'm sorry, guys. I'll be right back. Oh my god. <laughs> well, that goes to show you that sometimes you can <laughs> reinforce behaviors you don't want to see and they will be repeated. So you have to be really careful about that. But um, now I have to fill some time and try to tap dance with you guys. But I, I have a really good idea. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Hey, um, uh, Brad or Lucy, are you back there? Do you think you can grouch you out while Chris tries to fix his microphone? Okay, so let's see. Hopefully they heard me and Groucho might be on his way out here any second. But Groucho is one of my favorite birds. Thanks, Brad. Um, Groucho is a yellow naped Amazon parrot. And normally you find parrots like Groucho in the forest of Central America. 
Groucho's lived with people his whole life, so he's picked up mimicry and the sounds that people make. So Groucho, can you give everybody a great big hello? Uh -huh. So there's what that mimicry sounds like. Pretty cute, right? I know I like it too. Okay, so Groucho has learned to take the mimicry thing to the next level though. Are you guys ready for this? Let's see if Groucho will show it off for all of you. Groucho, do you want to turn around and face your uh, adoring fans? What is everybody looking at in the sky today? Oh, I do see some vultures up there. Like I told Miles, just look alive. You'll be fine. Okay, let's turn around. This way. I know, they're way up there. I can hardly see them, but your eyesight's better than mine. Okay, you ready? from beginning to end. Would you guys like to hear another song? Aw, Groucho, they're being really sweet out there. Do you think you can get it, give everybody a great big kiss? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, good stuff, that kiss, I agree. Okay, you sang Doggy in the Window, and you got a really good treat for that kiss. And now you can pick from any of the other songs that you would like to sing for everyone. Are you ready? Let's face this way. Groucho's a great way to do that. Yeah, that was good. Well, it's 2020, so you never know what's going to happen out here. Um, so uh, it's an important thing for us to talk about, though, not just that they're fun up here, but also the challenges associated with birds like Groucho. Because number one, he's one in a million. I mean, those songs, we've really never seen another bird that can do that. And chances are, you know, if you see another bird, the vast majority of them will never mimic speech the way he does. And they're just challenging. In general, they scream really loud. Really loud. Really loud. Uh, bite very, very hard. Very <laughs> and they can live a long time. Even small birds like that could live 50, 60 years or longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Parents. I love Groucho, but I have no parents in my home. What are the guinea fowl fat. running from? Where are you guys going? <laughs> hey. There is something that is throwing everybody off today. I'm going to, okay, you checked it. Oh, okay. I figured out what they're running from. What? Here, what, here, what? species of birds in the entire world, he has a 10-foot wingspan. How cool is that? And Ozzy here is a condor, which is a part of the vulture family. So you guys know what he likes to eat? Yeah, he eats carrion or dead stuff. So when an animal dies in the wild, a vulture comes along and cleans up the mess. It stops the spread of disease and it helps keep wild places clean. So in a way, you can kind of call condors or vultures nature's recyclers. And uh, Ozzy really likes that 10 foot social distancing policy <laughs> instead of six. Ozzy, you did such a good job. We'll see you later. Ozzy, the Andean condor. <laughs> He's so cool. He's cool. I was not ready for that over there. Um, what I was ready for was a different big bird that's going to be joining us next. I think you're going to like this one as well. This bird is called a crown crane. There he is. That bird's name is Frazier. It's Frazier Crane. Okay, you guys, you, you told everybody we've been here for like 20 years and that joke is always a grower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know what? You know this bird better than I do, so why don't you just call him the stage? Oh, Chris, no, you do it. You've been working so hard on your relationship. Stand right here. Oh, well, all right. Yep, and face the bird. I'm going to stand behind you. I have a tree. It's like a try. It's um, going to work. Try. I feel like it's going to work. It's first time for everything, right? Okay. Um, all right, so right down to the stage. It is. 
And there it goes. Yeah, see, I, mean, I told you. Just take over. You're fine. Go ahead. Chris, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. We've been working so hard, and I have an idea because I've been working on my relationship with the crane. Look behind the rock. I have something special for you. It's going to help. Back here? Yeah. What? Reach in there. What is this? Yep. What? What do I do with this? You put it on. Just... Yeah. Put it on. Yeah. Okay. What, what is this? Crown cranes have that beautiful crown of golden feathers, and now you have your very own um, crown of golden feathers. You kind of look like that guy. What's his name? Um, guy Fieri. Great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna make a crane connection. So I want you to lock eyes with Fraser and so, think about being in the grasslands. Okay, here it comes. Come on, Chris. Come on. Hey. Come on. That actually works. Seriously, it was the hat. No. I don't think no. it was the hat. I don't think it was the hat, Chris. I think that you have been working really hard on your relationship with Fraser, and that's why he came to you. So why am I wearing this? Because look at you. They enjoyed it, right? I'm a professional people. Come on. Aw, <laughs> oh, Chris, you're a good sport, and thanks for trusting me. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. That was fun. I did like feeding the bird. I will say that was pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. And there's a lot more amazing birds like this one. Ooh, everybody. The national symbol of the United States of America, the bald eagle. Everyone, this is hope. You know, hope is a living symbol of one of the greatest conservation success stories of our time. It wasn't that long ago when their numbers had dropped so low that a lot of people thought future generations wouldn't get a chance to see birds like hope in the wild. But an amazing thing happened because people took action. We cleaned up the waterways where they fished and we stopped using chemical pesticides like DDT, which was one of the reasons for their decline. Okay, so what you're saying is people, just like everyone here, played a part in helping the bald eagle recover from the brink of extinction? Exactly. People's efforts had such a dramatic impact that the bald eagle is no longer on the endangered species list. Yay! a great story. It is. It's a great conservation success story, an example of the power everybody has to protect wildlife. There's a lot of great conservation success stories out there, but there are still some animals that really need our help in the wild. Look at this bird. Look at this bird. Look at this. Everybody, this is a very special bird. His name is Link. He's called a blue-throated macaw, one of the rarest species of macaw in the wild. Probably only about 200 of those birds left. That's right, but it's not all bad news. We are working with an amazing conservation organization called the World Carrot Trust, and we are going to bring blue-throated macaws back to wild places. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a beautiful sight to see a sky filled with macaws? <laughs> it would be an absolutely incredible sight. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> it is amazing. These birds all have their own stories, but it doesn't stop there. So many more stories to tell about birds like this one right here. This is a harpy eagle, one of the largest predatory birds in the entire world. And look, Chris, it's Uncle Toucan. Yeah, very cool. Stories all over the place, right? That's right. So go outside, create your own stories, and find your own favorite animal. So, on behalf of all the animal behavior specialists up here, and of course, all of our feathered friends, we want to leave you with one final wish. May your hearts take flight and your spirits soar forever. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.